we say that a function f of x is continuous at x equals c if the limit as x approaches c of the function is equal to the function value f of c. Okay? And uh, we can expand this uh, definition of continuity to just looking at one-sided continuity, and that would be done in the natural way. So if we're talking about left continuity, it would be not the full limit, but rather the left limit. So limit as x approaches c from the left, so with the little minus sign of f of x, is equal to the function value. And then similarly for right continuity, it would be the limit as x approaches c from the right of the function f of x is equal to the function value f of c. So to give you an idea graphically of what this would look like, for instance, if we're talking about left continuity, we could have this function here that um, has the solid dot coming in here from the left. And then perhaps we've got some other place where the function is um, picking back up so that coming in from the right, we are approaching a different place. But notice that solid dot is attached to the left side, and that's the visual that you're really looking for. When you're talking about one-sided continuity, look for the solid dot at C, that would be the function value, and figure out which side it's being connected to. And so here in this first picture, it's being connected to the left side, and so it would be left continuous. Uh, in comparison, uh, we could get something that would be right continuous by having that solid dot there attached to the um, right-hand side. So perhaps the function goes off like this. Uh, and we don't really care or specify what's happening at the left, so really we could even have something like a, um, a vertical part, a vertical asymptote from the left-hand side. That doesn't matter at all when we're talking about one-sided continuity. For one-sided continuity there, we look for the dot. That dot is attached to the right-hand side, and so it would be right continuous. And so we really need these um, one-sided continuity ideas so that we can define continuity on a complete interval. And so here, let's look just for as, as an example at the closed interval AB. So we're including both the left endpoint and the right endpoint. So we can say that a function is continuous on that closed interval. Uh, we have to look at three things. We have to look at the interior of the interval. So everything except for the non-endpoints. And it would have to be continuous on non-endpoints. So at every point, maybe rather than saying on, I'll say at every point uh, in uh, the open interval. So when we're not talking about the endpoints. So the function could be continuous at every point in the open interval, but then we need to uh, look at the two endpoints separately. So um, at A, here's what's got to happen. Notice that the interval, um, we have the left-hand endpoint of the interval being A, but it's not the left limit we're looking for. See, if we're at A, we would be approaching A from the right-hand side so that we could get to the left edge. And so at A, we need it to be uh, right continuous. And then similarly, when we are looking at B, we have B being the right endpoint. So at B, we're looking at B being the right endpoint, but as we're approaching that right endpoint, we're approaching it from the left. And so it would need to be left continuous at that right endpoint. And so keep in mind what the interval looks like to get your left and right straight, but the left-hand endpoint A needs it to be right continuous, and the right-hand endpoint B needs it to be left continuous. Everywhere else in the middle, it just needs to be continuous in general to be able to say that it is continuous on a closed interval.